From the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank you for your generosity. It is inspiring and motivating to know that someone out there believes in me and my desire to further my education. I fell in love with Dickinson the first time that I visited, and I'm so grateful that donors like you have given students like me a chance to be a part of something bigger than ourselves and to make the world a better place. Words cannot articulate the gratitude that I feel for all that my undergraduate education has offered me. And I humbly thank you for affording me the privilege of pursuing a Dickinson education. Your investment in students like me is fundamentally life-changing and has very literally made all of my undergraduate accomplishments and experiences possible. Thank you for your support, investment in my success and future, and commitment to the Dickinson community that has so positively shaped me and so many others. I remember the day I was admitted to Dickinson and the disbelief and joy I felt knowing that I would spend the next four years at a place I already felt was home. I am so privileged to be a part of this vibrant, inclusive, intellectual community. I love every minute of it and wouldn't trade my Dickinson experience for anything in the world. Thank you sincerely for your generosity. I'm trying my very best to honor your gift of scholarship by taking every opportunity to learn and grow here at Dickinson. Your scholarship has opened a door, many doors. My family faced the financial challenges of life in a less privileged community, and the experience made me question the feasibility and even the value of a college education. Thanks to you, life is brighter for so many students. Together, you and Dickinson will help me to grow into a successful person and physician. I hope that one day, I too will be in a position to support Dickinson students. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank you so much for signing on and tuning in. My name is Phil Butler. I'm a soon-to-be Dickinson alum, which is crazy to think about. I will be graduating with a major in policy management and a minor in economics, and I'm so excited and honored to be with, here with you tonight. Over the next 30 minutes, I'll be your student guide. I'll handle all the details and tell you what's coming up next, so all you have to do is enjoy the program. Before we get started, you should know we have some great speakers tonight. You're going to hear stories from across campus, from athletics to the classroom, from campus leadership to student talent. I might sneak in some of my own stories in there too. Now, most of you probably know that the annual scholarship luncheon typically takes place in the social hall every spring. From what I hear, the event is always incredible, and by incredible, I'm referring to the desserts. Only kidding, but I've also heard that the event is so special because it brings community members together under this umbrella of support and gratitude. Over 80% of students at Dickinson receive some sort of scholarship support, which means much of the student body wouldn't be able to be here without help from so many of you. Tonight, we wanted to make a deeper dive and let you see how far your gifts can go. Now, as far as technology goes, you won't have to do anything but sit back and watch. But of course, we have some opportunities for you to participate further. After our program, you'll be able to click the link on the bottom of your screen. See it? It says, join conversation. And that will take you to a Zoom room for even more engagement and conversation. But don't click there yet. I'll make sure to tell you when. And of course, if you have technical difficulties during the program, click the tech help button on your screen. Okay, enough of the housekeeping. Let's get the ball rolling. It is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker and chair of Board of Trustees, Judge John Jones, class of 1977. I have to say, after being in so few places for so many months, standing here in the quiet of the Dickinson campus is almost surreal to me. You likely don't know this, but a sense of place was what brought me to Dickinson. The campus was so beautiful, and it had an energy that immediately made me feel comfortable. I would have never guessed that my initial relationship with the campus would acquire such depth. I went from studying in the library to becoming a member of the Raven's Claw. I spoke at commencement, was able to teach courses, and now I'm chairing the Board of Trustees. And as I think about how I've become increasingly involved with the college, I recognize that the root of my engagement can be traced back to one recurring theme, opportunity. Being a trustee at Dickinson has been my highest honor, and working with other Dickinsonians is certainly much easier than overseeing 12 district judges. And I think it's because once you become part of the Dickinson community, something gets in your DNA. It's the way we process information, the way we see the world, 
how all of us exposed to this place and our classmates and colleagues approach contentious issues civilly. We handle competing viewpoints with an opportunity for enlightenment, not in a way that is defensive or divisive. And this, I think, is why the board's approach to scholarship is so unique and so important. Each trustee has a different definition for student need, stemming from our own diverse life experiences. Though fundamentally, all of us understand the importance of scholarship. It's not just giving someone financial aid, it's giving someone else an opening to become a mentor, to complete an internship, to present at a conference. And this is exactly why our efforts in this area must be efforts of action, because we know that a residential college gives remarkable people remarkable opportunities. To ensure our college is the egalitarian place we believe it to be, we must be able to provide for those who offer diverse views and who can and want to become the unifiers of our future. Now, over the past several years, I've witnessed many around me become jaded on aspects of our world, but not me. I've always felt like everything works out for the best. All right, perhaps I've experienced a little of this worry too, but when I come to these scholarship events, when I meet the students who will be our future leaders, I'm always filled with a sense that everything is gonna be all right. Scholarship doesn't just allow students with potential to become leaders, it allows them to become great leaders with compassion and understanding and perspective. And while I offered to write a 139-page opinion about this topic, my offer was politely declined. But I could, because I believe that what Dickinsonians make possible for other Dickinsonians is the opportunity to reach potential in a place they can grow holistically. Through the support of teachers, coaches, senior staff, and of course, the alumni network, many of you have helped these students find their sense of place and their sense of self so they too can find their opportunities well beyond and maybe within this incredible place. Good evening. How I wish we were together, sitting next to each other, laughing and hearing stories of how you have shaped our students, our college and our country. But you will hear from those students. I would like to thank you though, during this year of uncertainty, in many ways you have been our foundation. I think you've learned more about a current Dickinson education because many of you have attended classes. I've seen you in class. But truly, you have been our foundation during a year that all of us have experienced this uncertainty. You've seen the resilience and the courage and the compassion and the innovation of this entire community, students, faculty, staff, and the Carlisle community. I offer my deepest thanks for your support. And I know that when you fund an individual student, you're not just funding that student, you're truly funding the future. Because at this moment in time, a Dickinson education is what's needed. We're creating those new leaders, those engaged citizens for our country and for the world. I offer my deepest thanks to all of you. Thank you, President Enzyme. I can't tell you how much I relate to what Judge John Jones says when he talks about opportunity in becoming yourself. I've had the pleasure of listening to him speak in one of my seminars last semester. Something he touched on was knowing yourself so that you can become an effective leader. Dickinson really became the place where I could explore my potential. When I came on the campus four years ago, the only thing I really knew is that I wanted to play football. But I started to realize how much more I could do. I joined Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, was selected as a part of the Order of the Squirrel and Key, which is the Gray Hat Society on campus, where I could serve the public good through a dedication to diversity, philanthropy, and volunteerism. I even found the courage and time to run for student senate as a junior, having no idea I would become student senate president this year. I always wanted my Dickinson College career to be greater, and it is, but it's also important to point out that I didn't get here on my own. There were so many people who helped. I received a Dickinson grant which allowed me to attend Dickinson in the first place, but there were other people who got to know me along the way. Dickinson's athletic director, Joel Catrone, called me every Sunday at the same time before I even got to campus. He didn't even want to talk about football. He wanted to get to know me. My second semester here was rough, both personally and academically. But my Spanish professor, Tina Antonicelli, made herself approachable and became a support system for me. She got me back on track, connected me with resources, and most importantly, held me accountable to my work and to myself. And other Dickinson alumni like Kevin Sanko and Ian Ganell helped me realize the gravity of what students could do here. 
I've been to some really, really important meetings over the past year as Student Senate President. And imagine, it all started with my Dickinson grant, which is being supported by many of you here watching tonight. I'm just one example, but I think you can see how leadership is taught by example at Dickinson. Our next set of speakers will demonstrate just how deeply the concept of mentoring can help us develop as students and as humans. I grew up outside of Washington, D.C. Um, in a single parent household, um, but I did live in a multi-generational house, so we lived with my grandparents and my great grandma. It was a home that was filled with lots of love and opportunity as well, but it didn't make the economic struggles non-existent. What we lacked in funds, we, we, you know, we made up for in love, but it still was really hard to envision a future. What brought me to Dickinson wasn't really a linear path. I had visited a few larger D1 state schools um, in Virginia with intent to play lacrosse there. And on those official visits, it became very clear to me that my identity at that school was gonna mostly be a lacrosse player. And I had hopes that were kind of bigger than that. And so a school called Dickinson reached out to me. One of the things that I loved when I came here was that about half of the visit pertained to lacrosse and then half of the visit pertained to everything I could do outside of lacrosse. I think one thing that always made me feel really good at Dickinson was that when I left my family in Virginia to come to school that I had another family here. Um, I was lucky to be a part of the women's lacrosse team in that I stepped into a space where you have successes, you have failures, but regardless of all of that, when the day is over, you have someone there to fall back on if you need it. The greatest lessons we learn aren't often reflected in the scoreboard um, at the end of a game. You know, some of the losses we have teach us more than some of the wins we have. It's that adversity and overcoming adversity as a team that I know is a huge part of a player's development on and off the field. Life isn't just a stepping stone where you leave behind all the places that you've been, but you have to reinvest in all the places that touched you. Look at the people you know, who, who impacted your life and how can you impact them as well. So my Dickinson experience wouldn't have been possible without scholarship and financial aid. And I'm so grateful for those who step up um, and make those amazing gifts. It's a really strong feeling to know that somebody out there, even if you haven't seen their face, has faith in you that you're gonna do great things and you're worth being invested in. I wear a lot of hats at Dickinson. I've been here a long time. I came in the summer of 84. I'm a teacher and advisor to students. I have a kind of big view of what the capacity for scholarship can do. Most of these people who have come here have been dreaming about the possibility of college and often dreaming against the odds, which is to say for whom the sticker price of Dickinson is unthinkable. So these people are coming they see something in Dickinson that makes them imagine that they could do some of the things that they've been dreaming about doing. My father, uh, Donald Moffat, was an actor who began as a classically trained stage actor, in, first in Britain. He came to America when I was two, and he broke into Broadway. In his sort of mid to late 30s, he began to do film acting, but he did probably 60 or 70 films over the course of his life. Jack, I'm glad you're here. Probably the most recognizable one, if somebody doesn't know his work at all, was he was the sort of nefarious president in Harrison Ford's Clear and Present Danger. How dare you, sir? How dare you come into this office and bark at me like some little junkyard dog? I am the president of the United States. When he died and I got a little, it was very sweet, we, uh, my brother and I each got a check from the Screen Actors Guild. Uh, we didn't realize that he had insurance through the union. And so it was, it was not terribly much money, but it got us in mind, it felt like a windfall. And we sort of thought, how could we put it to good use? 
My first thought was that the scholarship would be a great place for that, but I didn't really know the nuts and bolts of how to fund a scholarship. And so it was really over the course of maybe four or five months that we began to think about the outer edges of our comfort with giving. And as my husband said to me very sweetly, um, uh, giving really ought to hurt a little bit for it to be meaningful. It's the Donald Moffitt Scholarship. My husband and I started it and then my family began to fund it and I've been actually very touched by both students and alums contributing to the fund. When we framed the scholarship itself, we said we want to be sure that this could go to a meritorious student who was interested in uh, theater, film, and the literary arts, and that that interest could be co-curricular as well as curricular. So presumably it could go to a physics major who's a mermaid player. I wanted to be sure that it got used and used to sort of capture the energy and possibility of what had made it possible for my dad. He was a country boy who never thought about art school until he got a scholarship to go to university. He was very aware that he never could have achieved what he did without a scholarship. I think about the motto of the Grey Hats a lot. Esse quam videri. It means to be rather than to seem. The stories we're hearing tonight are all about this, truly helping people become what they're meant to be, what they can be. And Dickinson is an incredible campus that allows for all of us to do that. When I first came to Carlisle from Philadelphia, it felt pretty quiet, but I actually found that the setting allowed me to feel safe pushing myself out of my comfort zone. Access to Dickinson is about exactly that. It's about becoming a part of a community that pushes you to find your talents and your drive. So many of us are so lucky to experience this and here are two more stories about the link between alumni and students and how paying it forward can be expressed in so many different ways. I will be the first person in my family to graduate from college. It's a feeling that I can't describe, that I can't believe that I made it here. I was born in California and then six years later, my mom became a single mother. And so my sister, my mom and I moved to New Jersey, the three of us together. So that was, from what she tells me, like a very scary experience because she didn't know what was to come. My mom never went to college. She's an immigrant from Guatemala. She never finished high school. So my educational journey was kind of a challenge because we didn't know how to get to college. Education is one of the most powerful tools in this world and we need to have more students be educated even if they don't have the opportunity through finances to get here. You're paving the way for future Dickinsonians to come and experience this campus, to come and experience even the world around them. It's just very generous. Jasmine Annalie Lopez. My mom's so grateful, she's so excited, she's so just proud of me. Around the time of the bicentennial, uh, we did uh, 1776 at the Washington's Crossing Open Air Theater. And I played John Dickinson. And so he became a very important figure for me. So my classmates would tell you that there's red on me every day of our reunion weekend and I have a variety of um, mermaid earrings, necklaces. When uh, we were uh, students, we had such close relationships with faculty members uh, and it extended outside the classroom. And we got to experience faculty families in a way that uh, just made us feel a part of a greater community because at Dickinson it's not a faculty that is concerned about their individual success. Those relationships are invaluable and every bit as important a part of your experience at Dickinson as what you learn inside the classroom. Uh, the caliber of intellect commitment to social justice issues, environmental issues, global challenges. The college has continued, I think, to set the bar very high. 
And I think scholarship support is a great way to offer sustainability to opportunities for those who otherwise wouldn't be able to attend a school like Dickinson. My father died freshman year and I can remember some of my first thoughts were, you know, how am I going to stay? And my mother said to me, she said, I don't want you to ever worry about that. She said, you stay at Dickinson, this is a place you love, learn and enjoy. It just made me think we need to provide an opportunity for some student that might not otherwise get to be at Dickinson because, you know, they're the son or daughter of a single parent who's struggling to make ends meet. And I think the fact that, you know, we are a Dickinson couple that, you know, has re we've, we've reinforced each other's um, desire to, to give to the school. And so, you know, it was something that we both did as individuals before we got married, and it's something that just continued um, as we could uh, each year since. What we can do, we do. And I think the efficiency of how we use the resources that we have has paid dividends for students for a long time, and we just want to see that continue. Ruby's a perfect student. It's been nice to watch her grow, even during COVID. I grew up in Vietnam. I went to the music academy in high school. I was looking for a college who has a very good music program. When I was like accepted to Dickinson, I knew that I can apply for the Truman Bullard Scholarship. So I came in prepared and I got the scholarship three days after the audition. <laughs> The Dickinson education is about uh, doing, it's doing something of purpose. But in the music department, doing is not particularly easy under COVID restrictions. Ruby won the Grieg Concerto, uh, which uh, the prize is to play her concerto with an orchestra. But we can't really have an orchestra on stage, nor can we have Ruby right next to 75 members in an orchestra. And so what we've had to do this year in order to make that performance possible is to have Ruby record her part and then we sew together each of those individual instrumental parts to build an orchestra. You know, part of being a professor is watching your students grow in the spaces around you. Ruby grows, whether it's in my studio, Rubendahl, the practice room, she's always looking for a way to improve herself. I just, you know, really, really love her as like a person and, you know, not just a professor, but like my friend. In my department, education is one-on-one. -on -one. We do have classes uh, where we learn about Beethoven, but to do Beethoven when you know it from the inside out, you need one-on-one -on -one instruction. It's a premium education, and so there are probably more students than not in our department that would not be able to learn an instrument or voice if it was not for scholarships. It really is a wonderful place to be that they can try their hand at music, at, at, at a human art. I feel fortunate to be a part of this place when I hear stories like Ruby's, like Coach Coe's, like those of other friends on campus who have been able to attend Dickinson because of the generosity of others. On a personal note, I want to thank everyone who made my opportunity to attend Dickinson possible. I've received different scholarships and grants throughout my time here, which has alleviated a lot of stress, created opportunity, and has helped set up my future. I want to thank all of our speakers for sharing their stories tonight. I want to thank you.
all the scholarship supporters, and those who continue to advocate for opportunity, inclusion, and access through scholarships and financial aid at Dickinson College. Now, while a formal program has come to an end, we have an opportunity for you to chat with some of our current students and members of the Dickinson community. In a moment, our virtual breakout rooms will open. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you might have to scroll down. You'll see a Zoom link to click that says Join Conversation. Clicking once on this link will take you directly to a small group chat with presidential fellows, members of President Ensign's Scholarship Task Force, and fellow Dickinsonians for great conversation and connection over the topics and ideas that matter. Thank you again so much for joining all of us here tonight. Stay safe, stay well, stay Dickinson strong. Good night.